friends welcome to another video of zeta axis and today we will see the salinity distribution in oceans that is we will try to understand how salinity of ocean water changes at the surface as well as with the depth so we will try to understand both horizontal variations of salinity in the oceans and vertical distribution of salinity in oceans now before going into understanding the salinity distribution let's try to understand why study of salinity is important so the first factor is that density of water is directly proportional to salinity that is if salinity of water increases then density of water will also increase and we know the denser water will have more weight so that water will sink now we know that density causes ocean currents both horizontal and vertical it means that on the surface of the oceans we will see that water moves from one region to another region if there is variation in the density of water in these two regions similarly if there is denser water at the top then it will flow in the deeper parts of the ocean because the density of the water at the surface is less while the density of water in the lower parts of the ocean is high therefore this denser water will sink in the deeper parts thermohaline circulation also depends on salinity as the name itself suggests the thermohaline circulation is driven by two factors the first is temperature difference that is thermal difference and second is haline that is salinity so this thermohaline circulation is very important for distributing heat from the equatorial region towards the polar region and it also causes mixing of waters of all the oceans we have a separate video on this thermohaline circulation we will provide the link in the description salinity also impacts the living organisms in oceans the marine organisms are very sensitive to salinity variations even slight variation in salinity can be fatal to these organisms the evaporation temperature of water varies with salinity so if there is more amount of salt added to the water then the evaporation temperature will increase which means that water will no more boil at 100 degrees celsius but it will boil at a temperature higher than 100 degrees celsius so because of this the amount of water that is evaporated will change across the world so that is why we need to study this salinity distributions in the oceans there are several other factors of water which depends on salinity and each of these factors in one or another way directly or indirectly affect different climatological processes as well as the ocean currents in the ocean so let's see first horizontal distribution of salinity here is an image by nasa which gives salinity variation of ocean waters across the world we can see the scale or the color scale which is used by nasa so the red color is used to show the area having high salinity while the blue color is used to show the areas having low salinity if we see the map we can see that these regions have higher salinity but these regions are not located at equator in fact if we see this graph where we can see the salinity distribution across different latitudes we will see that the salinity will increase as we move away from equator in the tropical regions between 10 degree to 20 degree it will reach its maximum value and then it will again start to decrease so we can see that for this red color region we have a corresponding peak so the salinity occurs between 10 degree to 20 degree in both hemispheres so let's try to understand why maximum salinity region is located between 10 degree and 20 degree north and south so understand it let's see what are the factors affecting salinity the first most important factor is evaporation now if we take 500 grams of water that is half liter of waters and we dissolve 20 gram of salt in it now if there is evaporation of this water we will see that the amount of water is reduced but the amount of salt is not reduced because during the process of evaporation only the water is evaporated and the salt is left behind so the percentage concentration of salt will increase therefore the salinity of this water will be higher than the salinity of this water now here we can see that in these regions there is a high pressure belt because the headley cell and feral cell meet here and their air descends and this descending air is adiabatically heated 
and when they reach on the earth an anticyclonic region is produced and the air moves away from this anticyclonic region and therefore these regions do not have much cloud which we can see in this figure we can see that in this regions which is the high pressure regions there is very less amount of clouds compared to other regions and therefore the sun rays can directly reach to the ocean water over here and thus maximum evaporation of ocean water occurs in these regions and that is why the maximum salinity occurs in these tropical regions and not at the equatorial region and so we see that in both the hemispheres the highest salinity regions are around 10 to 20 degree north and 10 to 20 degree south now the second factor affecting the salinity is rainfall we know that in the equatorial region a large amount of rainfall occurs and here we can see that in the equatorial region there are significant amount of clouds compared to the tropical regions therefore there is large amount of rainfall along the equatorial region and this equatorial region a lot of water fresh water from the rainfall is added to the oceans and therefore we see that the salinity in this region is reduced because a lot of fresh water is added but if we see carefully then in pacific ocean as well as in atlantic ocean the area of less salinity is slightly north of the equator we can see that it is over here in atlantic ocean and it is over here in the pacific ocean now the reason for this is that the itcc the itcc lowest position in the month of december is over here while its position in the month of june is over here so you can see that the thermal region or the itcc is most of the time situated in the northern hemisphere that is slightly north of the equator so the maximum rainfall occurs in these regions that is slightly north of the equator and that is why in both the pacific ocean and in atlantic ocean we see that the regions of less salinity are slightly northwards of the equator in both of these oceans the third factor which affects salinity in ocean water is amount of river outflow now this is the salinity of arabian sea and bay of bengal and we can clearly see that the salinity in arabian sea is very high compared to the salinity in our bay of bengal and one of the obvious reasons is the amount of rivers which flow into bay of bengal and the amount of rivers which flow in arabian sea we can see that all these kaveri uh, krishna godavari mahanadi Br brahmaputra ganga yamuna all this discharge their water in bay of bengal even the rivers over here are also large rivers and they discharge their water in bay of bengal thus providing a large inflow of fresh water while only few narmada and tapi which are seasonal rivers as well as indus it discharges its water in arabian sea and therefore not much amount of fresh water is added in arabian sea and that is why we can see a clear difference in salinity in both of these regions moreover the area surrounding the arabian sea is desert like and therefore the temperature is very high and because of this arid environment surrounding the arabian sea there is large evaporation in this region on the other hand in the bay of bengal we can see that it is connected to pacific ocean through the straits in this region and therefore there is continuous exchange of water between these two oceans which further reduces the salinity of bay of bengal even another example is our amazon river here we can see that in north of this south american continent there is a large system of amazon rivers which discharge their water over here and when we see the effect on the salinity we can clearly see that the amount of fresh water discharged by amazon is so high that it clearly changes the salinity profile in this region now the next factor which affects salinity of oceans is ocean currents water on the surface of the oceans moves from one region to another region and it has great impact on the salinity of that region so here if we see the pacific ocean we can see that kurosio current is a warm current which moves from the equatorial region towards the temperate region while oasio current is a cold water current which brings fresh water from the polar region towards the temperate region 
And similarly here there is California current which moves from temperate region and brings less saline water towards the equatorial region. Now if we see the effect of salinity we can clearly see that because OACO current comes here we see that there is low, less saline water over here. Similarly this California current which comes over here so you can see that this less saline water or fresh water extends till California while here we see that this uh, Kurosuyo current is able to take this saline water in the temperate regions. Similarly, in the southern Pacific, we can see that this is a cold current. This is a Peru current which takes the uh, cold or less saline water in the lower latitudes. But here, this is the East Australian current which will take the saline water from the equatorial region and it brings in the temperate region. Now if you talk about the Atlantic Ocean, we can clearly see that there is this Gulf Stream and then there is this North Atlantic Current or North Atlantic Drift. So this Gulf Stream, it takes this high saline water from the equatorial region towards the temperate region and further this saline water is taken in the polar regions by this North Atlantic Current. And therefore when we see the distribution of salinity, we can clearly see that even though this region is in very high latitude still the salinity of the oceans is higher if you see corresponding region over here you will see that here the salinity is much lower so it is because of this north atlantic drift we see that the region surrounding the iceland and england have high salinity water the next factor which affects salinity of water is geography of the water body whether it is connected to other oceans or it is an inland sea or lake so here we can clearly see that Mediterranean Sea as well as this Red Sea and the Persian Sea. All these seas are almost enclosed seas and therefore they have very high salinity. Even the Arabian Sea which is mostly enclosed from three sides is having higher salinity. So we can clearly see that places where there is less mixing of water, those water bodies tend to have higher salinity while regions where there is mixing of water these regions will have less salinity. This is an inland Dead Sea and this is the second most saltiest water body. And here we can see Lake Van in Turkey and this is the saltiest lake in the world. Here are the three saltiest lakes in the world. The next factor which affects the salinity is fresh water coming from melting ice. Now the water which comes from melting ice is pure water that is it does not have any salinity and therefore when it mixes with any other water body it will reduce the salinity of that region. If you see this region here icebergs are known to come from the Bering Strait to in this Pacific Ocean and they melt and they provide fresh water. So therefore we see that in this region the salinity is very low. Now the next factor is effect of ice formation. In the last factor we saw the effect of melting ice but here we will see how ice formation affects the salinity of a region. Now here we can see that the ice is forming from ocean water. Now this ocean water has lot of dissolved salts but this glacier or this snow which is formed over here, it starts to discharge the salt in the water. This process is called brine rejection. Now as it discharges this salt particles in the water, the salinity of this water surrounding this iceberg will increase. And as the salinity increases, the density will increase. As the density increases, the weight of this water will increase and therefore this water will start to descend because it has high density. So we can clearly see that in a region if ice is formed it will start to discharge large amount of salt in the water and this water's salinity will increase and therefore it will descend in the lower parts of the ocean. So this is the summary of all the factors which affect salinity which we have discussed so far and if you want you can note them down. Now let's see vertical distribution of salinity. So far we have seen the horizontal distribution of salinity that is how salinity varies on the surface of oceans. Now we will see how salinity varies with the depth of oceans. 
Now at the surface of the oceans, we see that all these factors affect the salinity of surface water. We have seen that evaporation increases the salinity, precipitation or rainfall decreases the salinity, melting ice again decreases the salinity, the fresh water from rivers also decreases salinity while when ice is formed in the surrounding region because of brine rejection, the salinity will increase. Ocean currents both increase or decrease the salinity depending on where they are moving from which region to which region. However, there is little or no change in the salinity of deep waters because there are no factors which add or remove salt from the water. In fact, the high salinity water being more dense is located in the lower parts of the oceans and therefore we see a vertical stratification based on salinity. Now here we can see the distribution of salinity at the depth of the ocean both at equator as well as in the polar regions. So we can see here that in the tropical regions the salinity is higher which is indicated by the red color over here. And because the salinity at the surface is higher it starts to decrease as we go in the deeper parts of the ocean and it becomes constant after a while. In a similar way, when we see in the polar regions, the density at the surface is less. So we start from low salinity water at the surface and as we go in deeper parts of the ocean, we see that the salinity increases and then it becomes constant after a while. If you plot both of these curves together, it will look something like this. This is the salinity in the equatorial and tropical regions. It's, uh, it starts from a higher value at the surface and then it decreases while this is the distribution of salinity in higher latitudes that is in polar regions. Here the salinity at surface is low but as we go in deeper parts of the ocean it will increase and then begin become constant. So we can see that in the deeper parts of the ocean in both polar and equatorial region that the salinity is almost equal. I hope I was able to explain you the horizontal and vertical distribution of salinity in our oceans. If you have any doubt then feel free to ask it in the comments. If you have liked our video, then please share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. And if you like what we are doing, then you can contribute to our cause by using the QR code given over here. Thanks a lot. Thank you for watching the video.